Ciao, I'm Julia. Julia Kay. I'm glad you are here. Nobody has visited me in ages. It's been years now. I must tell you my story, but I don't know where to begin. There is so much that... I should start with my childhood, but my memories of these times are vague. I only remember the summer of 1929, when they sent me off to stay with my nanny. Nanny, will you tell me the story of the White Lady? No, little sparrow. Not tonight. A fog is coming, see? Yes. I know that when it's foggy, the lady kills young women. But why is she so evil? You see, Julia, pain and suffering can make us do evil things. Even if we're not actually bad. Just like soldiers have to kill other soldiers. I like the lady I've decided, Nanny. She must be in so much pain. The poor dear. She still scares me a little, though. Soon I'll be a young woman, and she could kill me. Does she kill those who love her? Of course not. That makes me feel better because I love her. But what about Martha? Would she be in danger? Your sister is with your mother, so do not worry. Do you miss them? No. I mean, yes, I miss Martha a little, but I love spending time with you. Now, go to sleep, little sparrow. It's getting late. Okay, Nanny. I'll go to sleep and dream of the lady. Was she beautiful? She was beautiful. Yes, very much so. Then she'll be beautiful in my dreams. And will I be beautiful just like her? You'll be even more beautiful. Listen, Nanny. Since the lady won't harm me because I love her, and since you're not a young woman, could you tell me her story, even if it's foggy outside? Please. Oh, please, then I'll sleep. I promise. Oh, all right. You always get your own way. I loved Nanny and I loved that story. Every time I heard it, it sounded like a new and more mesmerizing tale. Every night I would ask her to tell me about it, even though it scared me. Even now I can remember every single day of that time and how happy I was. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman who was killed by the man she loved. She was expecting a lover's stroll by the lake, gazing out at the old tree growing on the lake's island. So much hope and desire, but death, not love, was awaiting her. The poor dear. That's not fair. Life isn't fair, Poppet, but that's the way it is. And we must learn to deal with it. Okay, I'll try. But it makes me so mad. Keep on reading, Nanny. In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. So he was hanged on the small island, in the middle of the very same lake where he had killed the girl. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, has been imprisoned in the depths of the lake. She grieves eternally for the loss of the man she loved. When fog arises, the White Lady is known to leave the waters of the lake 
and roam the woods, looking for her long lost love in vain. Within the fog of dawn, hunters have claimed to hear the wailing of a woman in the distance. I'm a little scared of this story, even though I like the lady. Should I stop reading, my little sparrow? No, Nanny. Daddy always tells me that fear must be faced. Go ahead. Okay, honey. Every time the sad memory of the night she perished stirs in her soul, she takes the life of a young woman by slaying such a life in its youth. Even just for an instant, the lady feels free from the burden of her pain. Good night, Nanny. Good night, my love. I spent almost three years with the nanny, but when I came home, I quickly forgot how to be happy. My memories do not return until 15 years later, in 1944, when I stayed in that house. I enjoyed setting up cameras in the woods by the lake. My father created a device that attached to the cameras. It would make them take pictures at set intervals. I was trying to photograph animals, or whatever else was in that damned place. Reel off the film. Open the camera. Remove the old roll of film. Put the new film in. Close the camera. Load the film. Activate the timer. Almost ready. Now to bring the image into focus. There's something floating on the surface of the water. If I frame it better, I might be able to see what it is. them. I was horrified at the idea that someone might have drowned in my lake. The lake was my world, where I would spend entire days daydreaming. I would lose myself in my thoughts, but that was a rude awakening. So terrible.
I instantly noticed that the person was wearing one of my dresses. I was scared. I dragged that lifeless body as best as I could to the shore, trying not to drown myself. Only when I lifted her in my arms did I realize who she was. It was my sister, my twin, a part of me, dead. Impossible to comprehend. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do or to think. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. It's not possible. It's not true. There's no need to worry. Everything is fine. Everything will be fine. Martha, February 26th, 1923. Is everything okay? Are you hurt? What are you doing? Go, Eric. Run! My parents ran towards me. My mother hugged me. She, who detested me, was now cuddling me. Her warmth filled me with life, and the pain became bearable. I felt protected. Martha, are you okay? She asked me, speaking slowly in order to let me read her lips. She thought I was deaf. She thought I was Martha. I didn't want the moment to fade. So I meekly nodded my head. I didn't realize I had done something that couldn't be undone. I would have to pretend to be Martha, forever. O oh Lord who gives life to the dying, let your sacrifice of love be offered for Martha's soul. Into your hands I also entrust my spirit, so that I may be reunited with her in perpetual light, to never suffer the desolation of purgatory. Please grant her eternal rest, O Lord, and may eternal light shine upon her. Eerie, did you remember to light the candles in the hall? People will be here soon. Mummy always finds something for everyone to do. Daddy's oboe. We were preparing a really nice duet together. On the rare occasions he's at home, that is. When you're done, can you come and get the flowers, please? Or send Martha, if you like. <sighs> Never a moment's peace. Even at a time like this. She can't sit still for a second. A telegraph box. I know how to use it. Daddy taught me. There's no reason to use the phone right now. July 17th, 1944. Our family is deeply saddened and is thinking of you during this extremely difficult time. Ernesto E. and family. When mummy asks for something, there's no escaping it. 
July 17, 1944. Our hearts are with you and we share your grief in the wake of the tragic loss of your dearest Julia. Monsignor Attilio D. July 17, 1944, Ministry of War. Director General for Conscripts and NCOs. We are grieving over your sudden loss and we send you our heartfelt condolences. The Lieutenant Colonel Rapporteur. An old painting. I find it so sad. It communicates a sense of deep solitude to me. I can't turn it off. We have to listen to the radio all of the time. Any news and announcements can be vital. Do I have to do everything as usual? Siri, get a move on. I better go or she'll end up getting seriously angry. The only way people could tell Martha and me apart was by dressing differently. Even Mother couldn't tell us apart. This painter was a friend of Grandpa's. I always loved his paintings. As a child, I... Mummy and Daddy. They are the epitome of wealth and elegance. But pain pays no heed to money and style. Everything always has to be perfect with her. Parla Londra. Trasmettiamo alcuni messaggi speciali. Felice non è felice. È cessata la pioggia. La mia barba è bionda. Parla Londra. Abbiamo trasmesso alcuni messaggi speciali. Who closed the door? Erich, Erich, wake up. Do you think it's appropriate to sleep here, of all places? What? Hmm? Yes. I must have fallen asleep. What are they talking about? You can't stay here forever. Why don't you go to bed? No, no. I want to stay with my daughter. Your daughter? Your daughter? You have another daughter, you know. The one who's still alive. Remember? What are you talking about, Irena? Julia is dead. What kind of comment is that? How can you? You should be thinking about Martha. Julia harmed Martha. You know that, right? And as if that were not enough, she has now also abandoned her. It's the same old story. Everything is always Julia's fault, isn't it? Her fault for Martha being deaf and for you being infertile. Do you think it's the right time for this? Julia is dead, Irena. Dead. Someone killed her. Do you realize that? Of course I realize. I get it. Do you think I'm stupid? No one understands it better than me. She always brought problems. 
only problems. It would have been better if she hadn't been born at all. You're crazy. I'm the crazy one? Me? They have done this to get at me, yes. Your death is all my fault. All I could ever do for you was hurt you, Julia. My poor, sweet, crazy girl. What will I do without you? What will life be like now? All the time I didn't spend with you. But now I'm home. We can go fishing together. We can take pictures of butterflies. No. We can't do anything together anymore, can we? Nothing. I miss you, Julia. I miss you. While American bombings continue to devastate the peaceful towns within the Elsa Valley, we have heard some tragic news from the area of La Ramola. The young daughter of German Army General Erich K. was murdered near her home. What possible reason could there have been behind such a cowardly act? This is what the Carabinieri, who immediately intervened, hoped to find out. <laughs> 